As the old media decline and lose their political clout, many of them are searching for clues as to the new media interlopers who are contributing to what the Daily Mail calls the sinister cult of Corbyn. One of their answers, Navarra Media. Focusing on one of the senior editors, Aaron Bastani, the Mail suggests that the digital media group had been dubbed Momentum's armed police, that Bastani was a fanatic who brought chaos to Britain's high streets in a series of tax protests. Navarra Media, which is the polar opposite of the Daily Mail, could hardly have asked for better advertising. Navarra was founded in 2013 by a young and telegenic bunch of London leftists who are often found on television or radio discussions, and it punches well above its weight. None of it is built on a huge amount of money. Navarra has some subscribers, but their big appeal two years ago aimed for and achieved just £10,000. Their current appeal aims for 40000 and their message... For all the talk of change, the present moment is really one of crisis. A crisis of democratic representation. Of identity. A climate crisis. Of a failing economic model which isn't working for most people. We can't have a media that's beholden to advertisers or the political ambitions of oligarchs. And yet Navarra's reach is often larger than you would expect. Its Twitter account is followed by just under 32,000 people. Its Facebook account has over 38,000 likes and followers. Some of its individual stories reach many more readers. The website receives 72,000 unique visits a month. And the group has a reach of 2 million on Facebook. With important interventions such as an article urging Greeks to vote oihi on the referendum on austerity, which was shared 30,000 times and read by a large number of 18 to 30 year olds in Athens, they have sometimes helped shape the conversation well beyond their usual reach. Earlier this year, it organized its first in real life event featuring Paul Mason, journalist Zoe Williams, and Green politician Shan Berry talking about the rise of populism. And what does Navarra do? What does it offer in place of the advertising driven media? It's not what some people call the alt left. As senior editor Ash Sarkar told The Big Issue, where we start from is reflection, analysis and criticism. We come from activist circles and there's also an academic impulse with all of us. We started with our long podcasts and that wasn't doing it, but people liked the videos and the dialogue, the to and fro and building on ideas. We diversified. It has evolved into a multimedia organization with a focus on left-wing activism and UK politics. It publishes weekly radio, several online video series, and a regular stream of articles. Navarra is mostly defined by how its leading personalities bring different things to the product. Aaron Bastani is a regular on the radio show, but his fame has grown partly on the back of his video series called IMO Bastani. These feature Bastani compulsively, and often irately, extemporizing on current affairs. Every now and again, he interrupts the flow to offer a reflection on his other enthusiasms, such as, for example, fully automated luxury communism, a video segment that went viral, or Karl Marx, he was right. He has interviewed figures like Marxist economist David Harvey, left-wing journalist Paul Mason, and of course, back in 2015, Labour leadership candidate Jeremy Corbyn. He also appears regularly on mainstream media like BBC Radio 4 and Sky News. Ash Sarkar, aside from her regular appearances on the Navarro radio programme, produces a series of video shorts called OMFG Sarkar, which might explain such basics as what is Islamophobia, or slightly more provocatively raise the question of when were white people invented? Sarkar, like Bastani, is also a regular guest on news programs such as Sky News. The Sunday Times political editor Tim Shipman recounted his experience with the nerveless and fluent Sarkar in a television debate in tones of conflicted admiration. James Butler, another senior editor and regular anchor on the radio program, is also a dapper writer and intellectual who produces a series of videos called Terms of Engagement exploring the semantics and historical meanings of terms like democracy, ideology, Europe or free speech. Editor Eleanor Penny, who edits the long read section of the Navarra website dealing with issues in depth, also contributes occasional terse video segments called The Soapbox, where, for example, she lays into Big Brother's anti-terrorist dispensations or disputes the supposed feminist credentials of Theresa May. 
Michael Walker anchors a regular show called The Fix, which debates live political issues on the left like Venezuela, or which hosts interviews with figures like Mark Steele, Owen Jones, and Labour MP Chris Williamson. Regular contributor Sean Fay makes short, incisive videos on transhuman rights, pinkwashing, and the politics of queer sex in a series called Sean This Way. This, then, is an extraordinary diversity of content, styles, and ideas. It's millennial, radical, original, explicitly intellectual and activist and focused, and cheerfully self-memeing. It is oriented toward the Corbynistas, but also focused on the extra-parliamentary left. A Guardian article credits it for being part of the social media ecosphere which saved socialism. There isn't anything else like it on the British media landscape. One of Navarra's major focuses is on reporting the development of left-wing movements and parties and giving the audience the means to critically reflect on their politics and strategy. For example, they published articles on Podemos and dedicated radio programs to Syriza and the Greek debt crisis. Navarra was particularly interested in working out where radical media could fit into political insurgency. And it is in its coverage of British politics where it takes a decidedly interventionist stance that it's had the most impact. And as the Daily Mail cheerfully pointed out, it is as part of the diabolical Corbynista cult that Navarra has been most interventionist. Navarra was initially very wary and skeptical about Labour. Noting the general crisis of social democratic parties, it ran articles highlighting the threat of Labour pasocifying and liquidating as it embraced austerity. But that began to change during Corbyn's run for the leadership. At that point, Navarro was directly involved in battling the media attacks on the radical left candidate. Aside from Bastani's interview with Corbyn, he used his platform to lay into the triumvirate of idiots at The Guardian, Jonathan Jones, Polly Toynbee and Michael White, who were attacking Corbyn on a daily basis and point out that by historical standards, Corbyn was quite centrist. Is potentially a really um, popular center for British politics. You can say that with regard to renationalizing railways, hugely popular with the general public, huge majority in favor of doing it, and it even splits Tory voters right down the middle. Likewise with energy utilities, he wants to renationalize those too. Again, very popular. Navarro has become more enthusiastic about Labour and more interventionist over time, and this was particularly clear during the 2016 attempted coup against the leadership. Navarra agitated against the plotters, arguing that they were preparing social democracy's downfall. Bastani argued that the... That's not just the current European thing, that's been evident in British politics, actually for the best part of 20 years. Aside from the political panorama, Navarra ensured it offered Labour activists resources to fight their battles against the party managers. For example, it produced a guide for Labour members about how they could deselect Labour MPs who were stifling party democracy. Once Corbyn had defeated the coup, Navarro still had a lot to say in terms of the future of activism. In the aftermath of the Brexit vote, Navarro broadly argued for a Labour to accept the referendum result, but to be, in the words of one article, defiantly pro-immigrant and anti-racist. But Navarro often grounds its political interventions in a wider synthetic analysis of politics and media. After Donald Trump's election, Bastani wrote that there were six new rules in politics, among them Mainstream parties could now act as hosts for historically third-party candidates, Facebook could determine election outcomes, and political fanatics could win elections by doing the heavy lifting. This informed his view of the snap election when it came. And in the election, Navarro went in headlong as a partisan organization, part of an ecology of radical left media outlets. As Sarkar explained, our job was twofold. One was to push back as hard as possible at every Tory attack line, from the IRA stuff to no magic money tree, to hard Brexit and strong and stable. The other was to inject new and fresh anti-racist perspectives, link up globally on climate change and resistance to Trump. In this respect, Navarra, like many other radical left outlets, was an active participant in the campaign. Bastani was a regular commentator on the news, pouring cold water on the Tories' big polling leads. Sure, but we've seen the polling on Brexit, we've seen the polling on Trump. We saw the polling in the 2010 general election, the media called that uh, a Tory win. It was a hung parliament, 2015. They said it'd be a hung parliament, got a Tory win. So we've got six weeks here. I'm not presuming anything. But Navarro's emphasis didn't just fall on attacking the Tories or promoting Labour policies. It also meant elaborating ideas on strategy. 
Navarra published a detailed analysis of Electoral Commission statistics showing that young voters could defeat the Tories in key marginals. Now in the aftermath, a lot of Navarra's output is geared towards helping Labour activists. Three ways to make your Labour membership count. Michael Walker has expanded his efforts into the popular Party Time videos in which he appears in dated get-up, spits out slogans like Juicy, and offers radical Labour members tips on how to take over one of the biggest, most exciting social democratic movements in town. It would be wrong to reduce Navarra to an auxiliary of Corbynism. It's far more diverse than that, and it strives to a critical, non-defensive position, unlike much of digital Corbynism. But crucially, with relatively few resources, it has demonstrated one of Bastani's points in talking to Red Pepper. Often, you can do as much with social capital, connections, and influence. And that's exactly what Navarra has done.